Oh, come on and put your hands together in this place. Come on and magnify Jesus. Come on and lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to magnify God. We come to glorify his name. We come to exalt Jesus. We come to lift him up. Oh, come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. While you yet stand this morning, just turn to your neighbor and give your neighbor a God bless you and let them know that I'm glad to see you in the house of God. Hallelujah. Turn on the other side and let them know that I'm glad to see you in the house of God. Now come on and put your hands together like the real people of God and open up your mouths and give God the fruits of your lips. Oh yes, let's saturate this place with the praises of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord everybody. I'm yours, Lord, everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord, try me out and see, see if I can be completely yours. Come on. I'm yours, Lord, everything, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, try me out and see. See if I can be. Come on, everybody join in. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I got, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours. Try me out and see. See if I can be. Come on, now put those hands together. Come on. I've got everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. Y'all got to mean this. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely. Come on. Oh, I'm yours, everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. try me now and see, see if I can be, come on, one more time, oh, I'm yours, everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Precious, precious people of God, uh, if you are a citizen of the kingdom, come on and uh, lift your hands, open your mouth, and make a joyful noise unto me. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Come on, don't be weary. Don't get weary. Come on. Hey. Yeah.
Baby boy, I don't know your name, Precious. Both of you in that back row, I want y'all to move a little bit closer. You've been back there long enough. Move a little bit closer. Say people want to be close to the fire, so come up here. That's good, baby. That's good right there. That's good. Precious ones, y'all know me. And so very often we, we talk about things we don't understand. Uh, I, I think the scripture tells me that not only does God and Jesus, Holy Ghost, deserve all the praise, but he is the final judge. There are some of you in here that have been addicted to drugs. Some of you who have been very promiscuous. Some of you who've done a little bit of everything. But aren't you glad that Jesus loves you? Hey, hey, hey. Well, you know, I tell you, I already feel him moving in now. And you know what, saints, you're going to help me touch somebody and say, we're about to help pastor do this. We're gonna... You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. We worship. Oh, you are worthy. Hey, come on, come on, son. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, we worship Oh Lord, you're worthy. We give you all the glory, we Hallelujah. While we remain standing this morning, we're going to get ready for our responsive reading, which will be followed by a morning's hymn. When you have it, please say amen. amen. We praise God. We worship God. 
We thank God.
God praise here, somebody. Hallelujah. You can be seated at this time. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness, Jesus. At this time, we're going to get ready for our scripture readings this morning. The Old Testament scripture will be coming from Elder Hagen's, followed by the New Testament scripture coming from Elder Trawick. Let's receive them by saying amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. We serve a great, great God. He's faithful. He's faithful. Our Old Testament scripture this morning is found in the 32nd chapter of the Genesis, verses 24 through 29. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaks. Hmm. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? Hmm. He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. But Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And blessed him there. May the Lord have a blessing. Now, y'all, I don't know what's going on with this sound, but this should have been done before today. Now, whatever y'all doing, stop experimenting. We do not experiment on Sunday. We give God our best. Now, I don't know what's happening, but I've told you, and I'm not going to tell you again. Stop. Stop. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And you all do not want to upset me with this sound. Whatever's going on should, should have been done. Now, before I get too mad, worship. Make it real, make it real, make it real. Hold up. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in our sight. Oh Lord, our strength, our redeemer. In Jesus' name. Look at somebody and say, now come on, let's praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful Savior. Our New Testament reading will be coming from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 26 through 30. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that cannot be expressed in words. 
And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now clap your hands and give God praise.
want somebody, somebody who can witness to this, turn and grab your neighbor's hand, look them dead in the eyeball, even if they look dead, and tell them there is no way I can live without Jesus. Turn and tell somebody else the same thing. There is no way.
sing it with us. I have tried. Just to drive the message home, shake your neighbor's hand and say, labor, if it hadn't been for the Lord on my side the last time, I would not be here to testify about it today. But because God is so good. Oh my God.
as we all stand in this sanctuary for the reading of the Lagos of the written word of God. <laughs> Somebody might as well go ahead and Shabbat and get it out and get, get the little. Glory. In Genesis 32, beginning with verse 24, then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him all night long. And when he saw that he had not prevailed against him, the man that he wrestled with touched the socket of his thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. Uh, but Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven or wrestled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him and said, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. I need to inject this in some of the more antique King James versions of the scripture. I did not go into my Hebrew to see if it was so, but it says then Jacob asked him his name and he said, my name is wonderful. And he blessed him there. I don't have anything as a topic or a title. All I know is that this is Jacob, part seven. And let's see what the Lord does with it. And after you give your neighbor a God bless you, you may be seated in the sanctuary. Oh, 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 and the church said, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Oh. 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 <laughs> Somebody help me sing. Oh. Oh. Somebody give him the highest praise and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you may be seated. As we have traveled this journey on this saga with Jacob, for those of us who have been listening, we've learned a lot about family dynamics, generational curses, and how 
certain characteristics run in families. Today we come to the place, and I'm asking that when you get home, you will read in your devotional time, you will read chapter 32 so you can catch up because a lot happened right before the separation of Jacob and Laban. If we are to, I believe, exegete and understand the scripture properly, it is not difficult to see, if you allow me to take my time, it is not difficult to see that Jacob is still being kept because of the word of a living God, not a dead stone, but a living God. As I told you earlier in this series that all of us should by now have a word from the Lord. Our favor from God and our blessing from God is not because we have been faithful. It is simply because God has been good. This is not the teaching, but how many of you, if I may ask, know that if the enemy had had his way with you, you would have been gone a long time ago. I'm going somewhere if you give me a little while. That is why I believe I'm a very gracious man as a leader. And I do not try to judge people unless they come up with rebellion or stupidity or not being prepared in this house. As I told the Sunday school class this morning, when we deal with people, situations, even our own, uh, we have to look at ourselves and the situation holistically. You cannot take a part of the story and create a whole book. You don't know what anybody has been through or what is in their family that causes them to respond to certain situations the way they do. One of the most powerful truths found here is that Jacob's relationship with God was solidified and stabilized by something that many in the church today want to overlook. It was solidified through affliction. I firmly believe the reason why many people go through so much is because God is trying to get their attention. The choir just sang, I have tried over and over, but I found out there's no other way. There is a young woman in here today, y'all got to just bear with me, who has been looking for love in all the wrong places. There's a young man who's teetering on the edge of the precipice of drug activity and doing something that's going to land him in jail, trying to make a path for himself in life. Let me please share with you that the only somebody that I know that can help you 
is the Lord Jesus Christ. And please stay with me. As I wrote many years ago, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. So, you know, I've got to stop complaining. You know, I, 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 oh, God. People call me all the time. I get so tired of hearing about their issues. I hope one of them is watching today. God bless you. I love you. But why do we spend an hour talking about issues when we ought to spend that hour trying to seek the solution? People love to talk about pain, not healing. Because healing means I got to look at me. That is where Jacob is right now. A word spoken over him, an encounter with God. He has gone on and he's been deceived himself. God is not mocked. What he did to his brother has come back on him. I know some of y'all, especially you sanctified ones, didn't like me last Sunday when I was talking about him getting so drunk. See, y'all forget, I watched the video. And I look at your faces, especially up here on this pulpit. And because it's a true life story, he got so drunk, he married the wrong woman. Woke up the next morning and she said, hey. And he said, what have you done to me? Laban. No, I did to you what you did to your brother. Only when you sow something, stay with me. When you plant something, you're going to get back a lot more than you planted. And so now he has worked all of these years for his father-in-law, Laban. He has worked in order to secure Rachel, the beauty, his love. And now there is a draw in him. He is sensing he's got to get back to his land, the land that had been promised him. So he goes to his father-in-law and he says, I got to go home. Let me and my family, and at this point in time, my 11 kids, 12 kids, go. Let us go, but I can't go empty-handed. Oh, he's still operating in deception. He said, I'm going to go and separate the flock. All of the lambs and the goats and the ewes that are spotted, that are less valuable, I will take them and leave you the perfect ones. Jacob knew what he was doing. Laban did not because the spotted gene was in the perfect ones. Not the spotted ones. The spotted ones would have white babies. I'm saying that for a reason. Unblemished babies. But the white ones were going to still have spotted babies. He said, I'm going to leave you the spotty ones. And Jacob was so smart, he went and he cut some branches from an almond tree and laid them in the water uh, that the animals were to drink from because uh, that almond branch was like an aphrodisiac for animals. So you got all of these spotted animals mating at the water trough. But they weren't going to have their young for a while. And Jacob had planned to be gone before the young was born. He's still operating in deception. And his beautiful wife, Rachel, she wants to get pregnant again. So she steals her father Laban's 
deities. Good God. Put them underneath her camel, sat on them, and rode away with Jacob. And when Laban found out that his deity were gone, he started chasing them. And Jacob said, I haven't stolen anything. Look through all my stuff. And he looked through all his stuff. But when he got to Rachel's camel, Rachel now, oh, the family trait is continuing. Rachel says, sitting on top of her camel, I can't get down, Daddy, because it's my time of month. And she's sitting on top of the deities. So Laban goes back home. Jacob and Rachel is still operating in deception. Don't forget, an encounter with God. God has blessed him. God has favored him. Jacob is a rich man, very wealthy man. Because he has taken from his father-in-law, Laban. And so now Jacob's on his way back home. Only because he was being drawn by a power stronger than he. He was afraid to go back home because his brother was still seeking to kill him. Yes, sir. But Jacob was smart. Still deceptive. And most deceptive people are smart. Stay with me. Stay with me. And so, as he gets close to home, he knows he got to humble himself in order to be accepted, possibly, by his brother. And the only thing he can think of is to give his brother something. Now Esau has heard because Esau has spies out in the land. Esau has heard that Jacob's on his way back and he has a large band of people with him. So Esau has mounted up 400 men and Esau's on his way to meet him. Esau has not forgotten what Jacob had done. But look what Jacob did. Jacob gave Esau a gift which in today's dollars would be equivalent to about a half million. He sent him over 200 goats, over 200 lambs, over 30 camels, over 50 cows, and over 40 donkeys to a piece, and he sent them separated in case the lambs don't do it. then maybe the goats will do it. And if the goats don't do it, then maybe the camels will do it. And if the camels, I have tried over and over and over, but there is no other way. Listen. And so Jacob decided, I'm almost there, to divide up his family. Because he says, if Esau finds these, He'll kill these, and maybe these will survive. And he stayed by the brook, and he sent his family on in front of him. And that night, as he laid there, the scripture says, he wrestled with a man all night long and we are left wondering who the man was. Hosea said it was the pre-incarnate Hosea chapter 12. The pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. He stayed there and he wrestled. How was he wrestling? He was wrestling in prayer because you know what? A gift was not going to do it. You cannot steal my birthright, get my blessing, come back and give me a rose and think that's going to do it. <laughs> Jacob was not a stupid man. He needed an encounter with somebody who had not yet been born. 
Hosea 12 says, it was the angel of the Lord. Watch this. That came down. Watch this. All of you online, hear this. The angel of the Lord came down and he wrestled with him. He got no sleep that night. He wrestled with him and wrestled with him and wrestled with him. And then the angel of the Lord touched him in his socket of his thigh so his walk would be changed. Gifts were not going to appease Esau, but a changed walk would. He was struck, and even after being struck, Jacob said, watch this. I'm not going to let you go. Oh, shit. My hip has been relocated. And I am in excruciating pain. But God, I'm not going to let you go until you do something with my character. I don't want a quick fix. Because temporary affliction does not change nobody. That's why some folk can come to church and go to sleep over here. I didn't tell y'all I ain't the one today. And so his hip is dislocated and he's still holding on. And he's saying, I ain't letting you go. Watch this. Until you bless me. How did the blessing come? The angel said, what is your name? I'm asking you not to answer me, but what is your name? In other words, who are you, Jacob? You see, Jacob meant deceiver, trickster, and the angel needed him to admit who he was. You got to confess your sin. Can I get four of y'all to touch your neighbor and say, you got to confess your sin. You got to confess where you've been wrong. Let me tell you something. I'm going off right now. I'm going to go off for 120 seconds. But there are so many people that come to church on Sunday because they think it's the thing to do when on Monday they're heathens, on Tuesday they're doing everything they're big enough to do, on Wednesday they're getting drunk as skunks, on Thursday it's something else, on Saturday it's something else. They never have time for the ministry, they never have time to do ministry, they never have time to lift up the name Jesus because they think that if they just come to church on Sunday, they will be all right. But let me tell you something. If you have not had a demon arresting, life changing experience with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not all right. Tell somebody, you got to be changed. There got to be a difference in your walk. You may have come walking like this, but when you leave, you ought to be. You need to be cut up. So folk don't want to be cut up in church. Folk want to be stroked. Folk want to be made to feel that whatever they're doing is okay. I want to tell you today, that if you stay up under this word long enough, you're going to find out that whatever it is you've been doing, that is not good enough. Because if any man be in Christ Jesus, all things pass away. 
I know you don't like me. You can't come to church. You can't accept the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't do it and keep sleeping around. You cannot accept Jesus without recognizing his value. You cannot recognize his value without paying your tithe and giving your offering. You cannot see Jesus without automatically wanting to leap for joy. Nobody should ever have to tell you to praise the Lord. You don't need to be in the sanctuary to praise the Lord. You can be in your living room and praise. Let everything. That hath breath, smack somebody and say, praise him. It is. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's what holiness is. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. The name, just the name, the name of the Lord shall be praised if you don't want to praise him. God said, God said, the rocks will cry out. Something is going to make some noise. Something's going to bless him. <sighs> Tricks and gifts were not going to save his life. Your tricks, your gifts is not going to save your life. You need to spend a night in the wrestling pen. You need to wrestle with the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm like David now. I love the Lord, somebody say. He heard my cry. Oh, I wish I had a church. And he pitied every groan. Can I find a witness in here? And long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Great, I'm almost there, is the Lord. And greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. He is the great I am. And Jacob was wrestling with the great I am. God, God from Zion. Did y'all hear me? Did y'all hear me? Smack somebody and say, he was wrestling with the great I am. Oh God, he was wrestling, Mother Carr, with the great I am. He was wrestling with your healer and with your deliverer. He was wrestling with God. And God said, the curse, your generational curse, is going to be broken right now. Because you cannot meet Esau walking the same way. Because I got to keep you alive. And so the Bible says, he said, what's your name? He said, my name is Deceiver. And the angel said, well, you have said. You told the truth. You finally told the truth. You finally told the truth. You finally are not hiding anymore. You didn't finally told the truth. You have been a deceiver. And because you told the truth, I'm going to change your name. I feel this now. I don't care whether you go with me or not. Ask your neighbor, has your name been changed? 
Ask him with authority, has your name been changed? No, you ain't said nothing. Ask him, has your name been changed? Y'all answer them. Tell them, yeah. yeah. My name, somebody can say, used to be defeated. Now it's victory. My name used to be sick. Now it's healed. My name used to be lost. Now I, my name is found. What's your name? God said, I'm done now. I'm done now. I don't know where my minstrel is. I'm done now. I'm about to get up there myself. God said, I'm going to change your name to Israel, which means a man who has wrestled with me and made me bless him. Precious ones, as everybody stands at their feet. As everybody stands to their feet. If your name has been changed, I'm not talking about literally, I'm talking about in your spirit. Come on, throw your hand up and praise God for the change of your name. Got to find me somewhere. In the key of A flat, please. A change. A change has come over me. My life. And now, White as snow. He changed my life complete. And now I sit, I sit at his feet. Until he comes oh, wow. oh, A wonderful one that wants to be saved today while the saints are praying if you're not saved and you want to be or maybe not sure and you want to be sure will you raise your hand and raise it high right now in Jesus name is there one is there one is there one I'm so glad come on baby come on is there another change? 
Saints say thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. After giving them a God bless you, you may be seated. It, stand to your feet. Everyone with, everyone with your tithe, if you're elated to be able to bless God with your tithe, lift your tithe up unto the Lord and let's pray. Say, Father, be glorified. Bring your tithe with great joy. Have your sacrificial offering and your 50 week challenge offering lifted up unto the Lord. Let's pray one more time. Say, Father, Father. get the glory. Follow the greatest direction as they guide you down each aisle.
Father, we thank you for these gifts. Use them for the building up of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. If you may be seated very quickly, we have a brief announcement. Praise the Lord, saints. Very quickly, there was a diamond bracelet lost in the parking lot. And if you found that bracelet and asked that you would return it to me, and there is a reward uh, if you found it. Thank you. We want to thank God for our first time visitors here today. Hallelujah. For all of our first time visitors, we have a gift for you out in the Northex. If you please stop by our visitors table, uh, they have something for you. Now let's see everybody stand to your feet and give God a praise as the man of God comes back. First of all, Zion, I want to introduce to you someone who is tri on trial here at the fellowship to see if it works out, a very extremely gifted young man. He is Jewish, so we should be real blessed right now. I do get that, Russell, bless you, baby, bless you. Amen. Amen. I told him if he stay around here long enough, I'm going to get him saved. I told him that he was like, Bless God, and we are, we're in the process of trying to put a band together that uh, Phil will be over and to raise our level of praise and worship. Amen, somebody. Men who have been so faithful, thank you for your faithfulness in joining the men's chorus for the Women's Day. We're not going to have a rehearsal tomorrow. You, as well as Pastor, need a break. So we'll pick it back up next. Not tomorrow, Monday, but <coughs> next Monday. Don't forget what I taught you, please. I don't want to start all over again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Precious ones, I love you. And for those of you all who are new, who have never seen the slightly raw side of me today, you saw a little bit of it. But that's what's called pastoring. Amen. And so if you want to pastor, you're in the right place. If you don't, you better go somewhere else because I ain't going to play with you. Amen. Amen. I love you. Amen. But we will always give God our best. Always. Well, baby, we'll key you in. A flat. Take me to F, baby. Take me to F. We're going home on this job. Time is filled with swift transition. Come on here. No. Everybody ought to hold. Come here. Build. One more time, y'all. We out. Everybody ought to hold. God's unchanging God's unchanging hand Everybody ought to hold to his hand God's unchanging hand God's unchanging hand Build a See you Wednesday. Go in peace.